Western Wall, or the Wailing Wall, as it's sometimes called, is the most sacred place to the Jewish people today because it's all that's left of what once was the complex of the Second Temple. is not just a miracle worker, he is God. Because only God can command nature, and only God could still a storm. Jesus says very clearly in this passage, nobody knows the time. So don't waste your time trying to guess the time. Be ready all the time because I could come at any time. Thank you guys for coming. Many of you knew Ed Heinsohn as a captivating preacher, a brilliant professor, and an extraordinary scholar. To me, he was and is my Papa Ed. He's a teller of stories, silly and scary ones, like the blue light and who's got my golden tooth, as well as real ones about his life and childhood, which were both humorous and instructive. He is generous beyond measure. He gave away expensive knickknacks from other countries simply because grandchildren had expressed an interest in it. He took my family on many trips. He provided for my education in years past and still now. He gave up the rest of the last, he gave up rest in his last year of life to stay strong and teach me in his Old Testament class. He is a sharer of the knowledge of the world, both past and present. He took me along with him to Turkey where I listened to him speak in front of the Library of Ephesus with other internationally renowned scholars, and he was the only interesting one. <laughs> he took our family to Israel to see the historical stomping grounds of the Bible that defined his life. You could ask him about any country and any year in history, and he would always have an answer for you. I never beat Papa at this game. When, we, when he speaks, people listen. He's one of those rare people in the world who can teach with the intellect and vernacular of someone with three to four PhDs, which he has, and still, and still, um, and still take hold of each mind in the room with a never wavering command of humor and a tone that sets him apart from what would be extremely academically profound and probably really boring to the average person. He's truly incredible. I have never known and probably will never know again someone as downright funny, animated, and interesting as my papa. I love him for the little faces he would always draw next to his signature on years of birthday cards and Christmas cards. I love him for letting little Ashley dance around with his styrofoam head, the one his wig lived on. <laughs> I love him for grabbing me by the ponytail when a previously incorrigible younger self ran amok, terrorizing Grammy with our family dog, Murphy. I love him for doing the bugs, the bugs, the bugs every time I asked and even when I didn't. I love him for being my teacher all my life and this past year as my professor. I love him for showing me what it means to love your family and to put them first. I love him for all the times he made me laugh. I love him for hiding and stashing candy in all the highest drawers where Grammy couldn't find it. 
I love him for handing my rear end to me in ping pong and foosball. I love him for all the presents he has given me, from American Girl dolls to a multitude of academic books he knew only I would find interesting. I love him for being my sole source of intellectual genes. Just kidding, Grammy Donna. <laughs> and the savior of all my grades and my avenue of escaping high school sports. Very grateful for that. I love him for calling me up in front of the whole class my first semester of college to act out the day's lecture to my great mortification. I love him for singing Amazing Grace with me as I sat by him as we said our final goodbyes. I love him for that dance I got to have with him at Josh and Brooke's wedding. And I love him for that last special wink he gave me on the day that he passed. Pup, I hope that wherever you are, you can hear these words and you know how much I love you. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm Allie, I'm Jeff and Christy's daughter and I'm Ed's granddaughter. Um, and I just wanna read you something I wrote just in how um, Papa impacted me and how God is leading me through um, his last days. Ed Heinsen, or Papa Ed as I know him, was born in Allen Park, Michigan, into a long line of middle school dropouts and alcoholics. His dad never read a book, no one in his family finished the eighth grade, many of his family members died in their 40s due to alcoholism, and certainly no one believed in God. In the summer of 1950, his mom sent him to a vacation Bible school just to get him out of the house and keep him occupied. This is where he heard the gospel for the first time, and it was the greatest news he'd ever heard in his life, um, and the greatest thing he ever knew that life had to offer. And so he gladly accepted it um, and accepted Jesus as his savior. From that day on, God changed his heart and led him to dedicate his entire life to the truth of the gospel. I'm sure that he has impacted so many of you in this room as he has certainly impacted our family. Our family knows and loves Jesus and his word because of how God changed Papa's life in the summer of 1950. God used him to turn a long line of unbelievers into a family that knows and loves Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It's amazing to me what God can do with one person's life. So many of us in this room, including myself, would not know Jesus if it hadn't started with him. And I truly believe that so many more will come to know Jesus because of my family and because of all of you. In the last two days of his life, all he kept saying was, die for the truth, die for the truth, over and over. <laughs> um, and in the end, this is the thing that mattered the most to him. I really believe that he did dedicate his life to the truth of the gospel. Um, and through his life and through his death, he's inspired me to do the same. This doesn't mean that I plan on writing 40 books or getting four PhDs, but I believe that each one of us in this room has a specific way that we can give our lives to the truth. Thank you, Papa Ed, for giving your life to Jesus and for dying for the truth. I hope that we can all be inspired and encouraged to do the same. And thank you, God, for using him to change the trajectory of so many of our lives. Please, God, help us to dedicate our lives to you. Thank you, guys. It's hard to follow these two amazing cousins up here. Um, you guys are going to have to bear with me. <clears throat> My name is Josh Barrick. <clears throat> I'll come back, I promise. <laughs> Thought I got all my tears out. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Heinsohn's grandson. And uh, thank you all for being here today. It means so much to us, seriously. As Ashley and Allie both put it, he's Dr. Heinsohn to you all. He's Papa Ed to us, or Papa. 
So that is how I will refer to him today through, throughout my time here. You know, as a believer, uh, joy and sadness can coexist. It's the most beautiful thing. And today, in our flesh, we mourn, as you can tell. But in our spirit, we rejoice. Hallelujah. He is <clears throat> at the place that, like Jonathan said, he spent his whole life teaching us about. And we're so happy for him. It's my honor to stand here today and talk about my spiritual mentor and reflect on his life. I looked up to Papa's spiritual guidance and his wisdom most out of anyone in my life. And the, the most amazing thing is, is that I know that I'm probably not the only one in this room who can say that here today. He was no ordinary teacher. He was a teacher of teachers. He was a shepherd of shepherds. I had the privilege to travel with him as he spoke and just to be by his side. God put it on my heart about a year ago, and I'm so thankful for this, that I said, I just want to sit at Papa's feet because when he's gone, I'm going to wish that I had done that. And that's what I did as much as I could this past year. And I saw him countless times, whether through phone calls, whether through meeting pastors, that he was a pastor to pastors that the teachers that taught everybody else would come and ask Papa questions. And I love that about him. I just wanna go over some of the things and remind us of some of the, the things that he taught us today. He taught us all about the Old Testament. He helped us learn how to fall in love with digging through its pages to discover God's beautiful truths that were infused beneath the surface. He brought to life the old Bible stories by teaching us about the super chicken, Gideon, and how God told him to separate the suckers from the lappers to defeat the Midianites. And how could we ever forget about his impression of Delilah talking to Samson? Oh, Samson, why won't you tell me where your strength comes from? He taught us about the messianic prophecy of the virgin birth found in Isaiah 7:14, and the end time prophecies found in the last chapters of the book of Daniel that most pastors don't venture to preach about and most people don't even know are there. He taught us that the Bible is about real people that deals with real places in a real time in history. He showed us where certain Bible stories took place in modern day Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. He taught us about the rapture, how the living in Christ would one day be, and the Greek word is harpazo, or called up, bush, with the dead believers in the air and taken to heaven. He taught us that some believers with artificial parts would indeed have some things they left behind in the rapture. Well, there's grandma. She left more behind than she got raptured up. Man, none of that was real. He taught us about eschatology, probably his greatest works, the signs of the end times, the second coming, the Antichrist, the seven-year tribulation period, the thousand-year millennial reign, the new heaven, the new earth, etc., etc., etc. I could go on and on. He taught us all so many things. I personally am going to miss picking up the phone and asking him the most random biblical and theological questions that could cross my mind. And to Papa's credit, he never stopped and said, Josh, why, where did that come from? Or what, stop bugging me. He always picked up. He always let me in the door and he always answered every question I had. I can tell you today, I tried my hardest to stump him, but I never could. I told him I would, but it looks like he's got the last laugh on that one. We all love Papa for his intellect, his knowledge, his wisdom. But as Vernon so eloquently put, that's not why he was my spiritual mentor. 
he was my spiritual mentor because he didn't talk the talk only and teach us. He walked the walk. He came down to each and every one of us and touched us in a personal way. He cared enough about all of us as we heard people come through yesterday just about times, not when he was on the pulpit preaching and teaching. We all respect him for that. But for the times that he came in and cared about each and every one of our lives and what we were going through. He showed me how to serve first, how to be humble, and how to be generous to everybody in, in his path. That's who he was. He prioritized our family. And I agree. I think that he would be proud and he would say that we are his biggest legacy, which speaks the most to him. That he, even as he went everywhere, he still put us first and loved us, and we knew that. He showed me how to genuinely live and love like Jesus. To not just let what I know about Jesus stay in my brain, but for it to transcend into my heart and transform my life. You see, Papa's greatest lessons were not taught, but they were observed. This is why, as I said before, he is my mentor and it is an honor to be his grandson. The greatest thing that he lived out was the gospel. And out of all of his knowledge, the greatest thing that he passed down to us was the importance of the gospel. And when, by God's grace, when we had the opportunity to speak to him when he came off the ventilator, we were asking him tons of questions trying to get him to share how God had ministered to him when he was hanging there in between death and life. And to Papa's credit, he wouldn't say, he wouldn't say anything but, as Ali said, die for the truth. Jesus is truth. That man could have said anything in that moment, and that's all he brought it back to, because that's all that matters. And he would often say, the King Jesus is coming back one day. The question is, is he coming for you? If he was here today, he would pound this pulpit and say, if you don't know him, and if he's not coming back for you, today is the day. And I challenge that with you this day, that as his life, is, and today is another reminder that this life is short. Do you know where you are going? And Papa, I know you are listening up there making sure everything I'm saying is theologically correct, and so I hope I'm making you proud. And I promise to you, to God, to everybody here, that we will carry the mantle and we will continue to preach the gospel. <clears throat> and I'd be remiss not to leave with this. Since Jesus is coming back, but as humans, we do not know the time. So since nobody knows the time, do not waste your time trying to guess the time but be ready all the time because Jesus could come back at any time. God bless you all. Thank you for being here today.